the king of Iowa, Jackson Hydesh. He's back, baby. How you doing, man? <laughs> Dude, I'm awesome. How are you, Dominic? Really, really good. I texted you last week, uh, and to context this for the listener, we're just going to catch up on life over the next hour. I'll like set a timer for an hour and we'll, we'll stop it then. Um, yeah. But we were talking beforehand. You were like, man, Riverside, like that's the the p- platform I, I record on. You're like, we haven't done this in forever. And I think the last time we did this was the day of your graduation party, I think. Yeah, you're probably right. That probably is yeah. how long ago. It feels like forever. I remember sitting there. I don't remember the exact day, but that, that sounds about right. Because um, it wasn't it was lo- it wasn't long after I broke four, which is crazy to think that I'm like coming up on a year ago from that now. Um, like a year has gone by in my life since that. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a while. I mean, we text each other, obviously, like we have, we have a good relationship off podcast, but I mean, it's been, it's been a while since we've done this. So yeah, it, it took me a while to figure this thing out, but I'm excited to be back. And <laughs> thank you for having me on again. I think that you probably are the only guest in the history of the podcast who did a podcast recording the day of their grad party. I feel like most people are probably like, <laughs> freaking out coordinating with their parents yeah. like going to the store to pick up something last minute you're like screw it yeah, i'm gonna whatever. record a podcast yeah. with dom <laughs> yeah 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 he's probably right <laughs> what do you remember about that day Graduation oh what party. I remember? Oh, my grab party was awesome i really liked it again um kind of timing wise like it was it was it was really early june so like coming up on like almost a year ago now of my senior year and I, like i said before it was like a day or two after I broke four. So like, I mean, I was on cloud nine. Like I was so euphoric. I remember those, even like, I mean, I, I still am kind of euphoric about that. Like that part of my life that like last June. Um, but I just remember thinking like, oh, like this is no stress, whatever. Like I can just get to hang out with my friends. Everyone gets like, sounds like kind of, I don't know, conceited. But, like everyone gets to celebrate me. Like I'm with all my friends and family and like good food. Um, and I just remember having like no stress in the world. Like I, I was on top of the world. Like everything was awesome. Um, that was a really fun day though. My grad party was fun. I did with one of my best friends back home. Um, we did like a joint one and that was really fun. My grad party was, it was awesome. And I, I posted on like on my Instagram and Strava. So I had all these like running. I remember people, that. Like, so why yeah. would you do that, bro? <laughs> well, it wasn't at my house. So I wasn't worried about like, oh, okay. That's good. address. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was at like our local park shelter. And I was like, honestly, like, sounds bad. But, like I need the money and like, <laughs> if people want to come and eat food, like why not? Like if they want to come. So yeah, that was, that was fun. That was a good day. Um, podcast was fun too. <laughs> And then the Europe tour that you went on with the Heidish fam. Yes. Yes. The Europe tour with the Heidish fam. That was, that was fun as well. Wow. That's weird. Again, like, I don't know. This is, I already know this podcast and get a lot of reflecting, which is a good thing. I mean, I, right. I, it's been a while since we've talked. Um, but yeah, that's weird. That was a year ago. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really fun. So <laughs> I think you get this all throughout high school, but specifically senior year, you go to so many grad parties. Do you remember how many mm-hmm. grad parties you went to last summer? Oh, dude. My, yeah. Like my senior summer slash like spring. I mean, there's, there was only like 300 people in our graduating class. So it wasn't anything like nuts. But like the thing is when it is kind of that smaller 300 people, like I know like 200, 250 people of that. I mean, not super well, but like you have mutual friends and have some of your friends and you are going, then you'll go. So I, I don't know. I don't think I quite got a hundred, but I'd say probably between 70 and 80. Like it was, it was a lot. There was like weekends oh we'd gosh. go and it'd be like 10 AM to like 8 PM. Like we were at grad parties all day, but it was fun. Like catching up, like, I don't know, getting to see everyone. And like, it was just such a fun, t- like, I mean, it's like, and if anyone's a senior listening, that's still completely early. I know you will too. It's so fun. Your senior year, your senior spring and summer. It's, it's an awesome time in your life. So yeah. As Connor Burns would say, you did it for the food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Yes. Um, Mother's Day was yesterday. What'd you get for Mrs. Heidish? Either exposing you as a bad son or good Ooh. son here. The goat. Uh, I think in the middle, to be honest, I didn't put, a, uh, I, I don't know if I could say this, but my family got her <laughs> something. So I didn't personally get her something Okay. because, fair. um, but we, we joined, got her this like, like coffee, I can't remember what it says on, but this like coffee mug. Um, and then we also got her a picture from us last year in Europe and it, ha- it has something engraved in it. Like, I don't, I can't remember what, but it was like a picture of all, like all six of us as a family. Um, and then a coffee mug. And then we had breakfast yesterday with her. And honestly, I think she kind of just like took a, I mean, she, I mean, she was around, like we, we celebrated, but we didn't do a ton of stuff. She kind of just wanted to chill, um, which is usually how a lot of our mother's day and father's day stuff does. We do like a brunch or dinner, get like mom or dad gifts, but we're not a super like invite all the family over and stuff. So, um, but it was fun. I, it was a fun mother's day. I, I loved it. So yeah. I'll be honest. <laughs> yesterday was the first day I've ever bought my mom flowers in my entire life. So really honestly, yeah. me too. Like personally, I don't know if I, I we've gotten like, I just, again, probably exposed me, but we've gotten her like flowers of family. It's usually <laughs> like my little sisters that do it or a little more thoughtful with that stuff than me. Um, but yeah, I don't think I've ever personally like went and bought flowers and gave them to my mom. 
probably should at some point. It's probably a yeah, thing first, I should start first doing, time but... for me. Went to Kroger. Do you <laughs> yeah. all have Kroger in Iowa? What's the grocery uh-huh. store chain? We have Hy-V. Have you ever heard of that? No. No. We have Hy-V. Iowa like, sounding thing ever. Yeah, I know, right? We have like Costco and stuff, but Hy-V is where we shop. I think it it might be an only an Iowa thing. I've never seen them even in like Minnesota, Illinois, or anything like that. So I don't know. Interesting. Um, speaking of the high school piece, for those that don't know, you went to Dowling Catholic, which has been talked about extensively more since your last on the podcast. My <laughs> joke is that you're the best, <laughs> you were the best yeah. athlete to ever come out of the school because people yeah. <laughs> just talk about Caitlin Clark like crazy. One, have you ever seen or met her? And two, does she deserve all the hype? So one, seen or met her. Yes. I actually, I've been going to school with her. I mean, she's three years older than me. So like when I was a freshman in high school, she was a senior in high school. So we only overlapped one year in high school, but like we went to the same kindergarten, preschool, maybe not preschool, but kindergarten, like Dang. elementary, middle school. Like I went through, a, went to a K through eight called St. Francis, another Catholic school. She went to that as well. Um, and she went to Dallin. Like she ran on our, like my middle school track team, like whenever she what? was like fifth, sixth, seventh. Eight. I know. Right. She was, she played soccer too, but I think, I think she was a hurdler. I don't know if she did in high school. I think she dropped it for soccer and basketball, but my dad like actually coached her. Um, it's funny. My dad, like, I think he calls her Katie. So like he has a nickname for her. Um, so Pause. yeah, it's funny. I, the I, goat, yep. Mr. Hydas coached Caitlin Clark. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure in middle school track. I mean, I, I'd have to ask him, but he usually pulls that out and is like, yeah, I, I know Caitlin Clark. And it's funny too. Cause like Iowa does not have a ton of like famous sports people. And then like, just all of a sudden, like Caitlin Clark happens to be from not even my own high school, but like she lives like five minutes away from me. Her younger brother was one of my good friends in high school. Like, um, it's, it's crazy. So I actually have like a pretty good connection with her. I've always said, like, I think if I saw her in a grocery store, like back home and like walk past her and said like, Oh, hi, Caitlin. Like I, I would guess she'd be like, Oh, hi Jackson. Like we're not on like, we're not like super good friends, obviously because she's three years older than me, but I would say like, if she saw me, she would recognize me. I think maybe that's me being too, <laughs> not being humble enough, but I think so. Um, but she it is crazy. Your dad. I mean, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. My dad okay. is still pretty good. Fr- I mean, I am too, but my dad is still good friends with her parents. Um, so it is kind of a weird like connection that like all of a sudden, cause I remember like she was really good in high school, but she wasn't like blowing up like she is now, obviously. So then like each year it would be like, Oh, like she played really well as a freshman. That's awesome. And all of a sudden, like now she's a senior and she's like the most talked about sports player in the country right now. Um, mm-hmm. So it's crazy that I know her and like, I don't want to using the phrase I grew up with her might be a little too close for us, but like, bro, you went to the same kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is, it's, that it's is crazy. crazy. So, that is so crazy. Yeah. Dang. That's so funny. You didn't, I literally text you about her and you never told me <laughs> yeah. any of that. I know. I, I feel like, I, yeah, <laughs> 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 that's crazy. Wait, so I want to hear this. Do you think she knows you broke four last summer? Ooh, I'd assume you have some mutuals who so. follow you. I, I would I would think reposted. so maybe so she like I remember this is going into it like too far back in high school my junior year I had like this this thing well I, it was at the state meet my junior year I don't know if you've ever seen this but I got like hit in the middle of my 800 race and like went barrel rolling. have we ever talked about this maybe not no but this this was a whole big deal I'll, we'll tell us this story for a little bit so my junior year I was running the state 800 um I could send you a video after this too but I, I kind of made a I I'd say it was a clean move, but like I, I gave someone an elbow to kind of like let them know I was there. Um, and then the guy actually just hit me in the back of the head. And I went rolling down the track. Um, it's a kind of a funny, I mean, I literally am barrel rolling down the track. I, I like get up. I'm like, what just happened? Like I'm a junior, like eight, like the, I was like planning on trying to win the state championship. Like it would have been my second or third state championship ever. It was like, whatever, really locked in, blah, blah, blah. Um, got hit. I'm like, oh, what just happened? So I finish it. Anyways, I actually ended up getting to rerun the 800. So I got to rerun it later in the meet just myself like a time trial 800 at our what? state meet it was like the only time it's ever happened in iowa state history which was kind of crazy so i remember anyways all this to say um i remember she like tweeted about it when before she was like really really big this was whatever two years ago now um but she tweeted about it and said something about, like oh like everyone come out to drake track to support jackson in his re-race or whatever so, so i would think when? she would know but i did not and i'm getting third but it was also 30 minutes after i ran a 10 second pr in the 1600 in one state in that so I was like pretty dead and it was at the end of the meet. And like, by that point, like our team, everyone won the state championship. And I was like, just so euphoric. And like, it just been a long weekend, but I didn't, I got third. I ran 154 solo. So I was, okay do you think if you won, it would have been super controversial? Oh, hundred percent. I almost think it would have been worse. Not, that sounds bad. Like, cause I would want another state title, but also the guy who won was very, very deserving. Like he ran 151 and like, he's a, he runs at the university of Nebraska now, super deserving guy. Um, so I was really happy for a one and like, yeah, that would have been hard for me to like rerun on my own, like 
and like win and be like, all right, well, that's not really winning the race. Like that, that would have been super controversial. I think even some people were mad that I got third because even then that's still like, can like screw up team score a little bit, right? Like I got six points instead of zero or whatever, which can push some people back in points. So I'm rambling, but <laughs> anyways, yes. This news about Caitlin Clark. Oh, here's what I was going to go back to. Uh, I don't know if you responded. Do you think she's, I mean, after all that information you shared, I don't know how you could blatantly <laughs> state she's overhyped because you might see in the grocery store, but <laughs> do you think she's overhyped? <laughs> Honestly, no, she is really, really, really good. She's super talented, super hardworking. I think people think she's cocky. I don't know if I'd say that, but I'm also a biased Iowa women's basketball fan. I really like how she plays. She's fun to watch. I mean, she is quite literally like the woman Steph Curry. I mean, she's insane. I mean, she just pulls up from the logo. Like, she's a very, very, very fun player to watch. And, like, I'll be the first person to admit, as bad as it sounds, like I was not really a big women's basketball fan before Caitlin Clark. And, like, Caitlin Clark has legitimately, in, like, made me enjoy women's basketball more. She, like, I would watch those games and be like, wow. Like, I remember watching, um, I mean, they lost, but I watched them in the national championship. And I felt like I was more in tune in that game than I was with the Purdue UConn game. And that's like, that's saying a lot. Um, but I, again, she's also like from my hometown, like she's just so fun to watch. I mean, she's, she's really talented, really good. I hope she does great things at WNBA. And I, more than anything, I hope her following grows more because I think people have speculated about that. Well, uh, like more people watch women's basketball, like in college than they do the WNBA, but I'm hoping she can bring something to that, that franchise or league. So yeah. Right. But, I think that's fair. Yeah. I, I'm trying to say stuff that won't get me canceled here. I don't. Yeah, think I she's, know, right? <laughs> I, I don't think she's overhyped. But with that being said, you take any decent. I, I really dislike the conversation around. Oh, you know, you put her in. You put her in the NBA. She's holding her owner. You put oh, her yeah, on no. any. And it's like no, she's getting destroyed. Or even even no. uh, with Cooper Dijon or however you say his name. Oh, um, Cooper Jean or whatever. Yeah, he's he he Is played. Who's like a cornerback at Iowa. And yeah, Cooper Jean. Yes, him because mm-hmm. he got asked if he could beat Caitlin one on one in basketball, and he said he said most humble response like he thinks he could. People were yeah. like, "No way, this guy." No way. Yeah. And then someone released his high school uh, basketball mixtape. The guy's dunking. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, he's no crazy. Yeah, he's yeah, a no cornerback in Division One level school. Yeah. No, yeah. he was like a. I, I know he was like a multiple time state champion track too like he's insanely fast like could dunk he played like he was from like a tiny school like 1a is our smallest school district um i i don't know him personally but i, I remember when i was either he might be two years older than me but like he was the guy in football and like he was still a good basketball player yeah i would i think he would win and caitlin clark is super talented don't get me wrong and this, again i'm gonna be careful with my words too uh, but the whole like putting the women in the nba is kind of like uh, i just i don't know i'd have to see it i guess I, i'm not i'm not gonna say she would destroy them but I don't know. She's going up against six, nine, six, ten guys instead of five, ten, five. Imagine women, Wendy so. against Caitlin Clark. Yeah, exactly. Right. Have like to, like I have don't half know. arm extension yeah. and would be blocking her. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just it also. I mean, plus it's a smaller ball. Like the the pace is different. Like it's just a whole different game. So I will I say, know, but. I will say to women's basketball credit. I and I don't follow the WNBA. I'll state that confidently, and I don't yeah, care if I get too. hate for it. I don't watch the NBA really too much either. Um, yeah. The all-star three-point competition between Steph and Sabrina. I don't know her last name. Oh, yes. I know that was you're impressive. Sabrina that was kind of cool. Her own. Yeah, she definitely held her own. That was fun to watch. See, that stuff like stuff like that, I think, is like, yeah, I think that was fun to watch. That was good publicity, whatever. Like, I was entertained by that. But, like, putting Caitlin Clark in a five-on-five, like, NBA game, like. Yeah, she's getting cooked. I, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Anthony Edwards is breaking your ankles on the first leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the yeah, other thing, and uh, this is very, very a hot take. No, it's not a hot take. It's just facts. Uh, <laughs> Jackson Haddish brings out maybe the the more controversial side of me, um, or the more comfortable side of me, which shares the controversial <laughs> takes. Like people who, I mean, the pay is stupid low in the WNBA, oh, yeah. but I mean, come on, she should. None of them should be compensated like NBA players. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the no. day, these companies are slated as entertainment companies and because of that the whole premise of it is are we filling seats how many people are watching i definitely see reality where she could up that and and could be the reason that people get paid more which would be awesome but in no reality should she be signing like a lebron type deal oh no for the WNBA. (laughs) Mm -mm. people make it too much about money It, it just i don't know it just yeah i i completely agree like she I don't know. She should probably shouldn't be. It sounds bad. I don't even want to say that. About it. She probably shouldn't be getting paid thirty million dollars a year. I don't know. It's just although exactly the Nike right. deal was crazy. Too. The Nike and yeah, that I mean, is smart and that's representative. They know she'll sell yeah. shoes and that makes sense. Yeah. So that makes sense. 
Although yeah. I did hear that Under Armour and Steph Steph Curry personally pitched to her joining his Curry line really? Under Armour. Wow. And I think that would have been pretty so sick. cool. Because I love that Nike cool and I too. think they do a lot of good things, but I think it would have been cool for her to like do something like I honestly think she would have gotten more headlines if she didn't go with Nike. Because Nike was almost like a given. I don't know. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's yeah. It's kind of turning out in the running world a little bit of like I like all these people like when people like I say most I'd say most like kids when they grow up or even like college athletes, if they do want to sign professionally for running, like it's always Nike. Whereas I don't know, I think recently like more people would sign with New Balance, especially on too. On's been crazy, but I think it's kind of more cool when you sign with a brand that not a lot of other people are with. And obviously the whole Bowerman thing going on right now, who knows where Nike is going, but I kind of just took us off on a tangent, but um, what's your take on all the New Balance NIL stuff? Because you were one year too yeah. late, which I don't know if you think that's good or bad. Like if you're glad you missed that, but I feel like NIL came to the high school scene as soon as the class of 23 graduated. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Like, obviously I would love to be like, in, like a sponsored athlete by New Balance. Like New Balance is a sick brand. New Balance indoors. I went to New Balance outdoors. I went to like both awesome. Um, yeah, it feels like this sounds bad, but like, it feels like everyone's getting an NIL deal now. And like, like I'll be honest, like I've, I've tried in college and even tried a little bit in high school, not with any big brands like Nike or New Balance are on. Um, but I would try even with like smaller companies and like, it was hard. Like I couldn't get one. Um, and like Simeon Connor still don't have one. And like Cole has one with Hoka, which is awesome. Cause he won foot locker. I shouldn't say cause he won foot locker, but I think that helped him cause he won foot locker and now Hoka sponsors foot locker. Um, but like, yeah, it now feels like, I mean, a lot of people are getting them. Like Tenota got one last year too. I, I forgot about that. Um, but I don't know. This sounds bad, but I feel like we kind of paved the way for that. And this is kind of a broader topic. I am so always talking about, I feel like the reason this sounds not even self-centered, but us as a group, like the class of 23, I feel like the reason the class of 24 is getting so much publicity and getting so much media coverage and these NLI deals, I honestly think it's because of us. And I think we paved the way for like, people that are going to be better than us and run faster times than us see what we did last year and then want to go do the same thing this year. And I think it's awesome. It's so good for the high school sport. Kids are running crazy fast, even faster than we did last year, which is insane. Cause I thought no one was going to even get close to the times we ran last year. Um, and now like Drew Griffith is running like eight thirty four, like whatever, six times this year, not actually, but has run like eight forty or lower. It feels like like four different occasions. Um, so it's, in, it's insane. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a little bummed I missed out on it, but hopefully something's something's in the future for me in the next couple of years as I kind of start to ramp back up running and run in college. So, yeah, yeah it is so interesting. I, I'm surprised it wasn't more of a thing towards the end of last year and more people mm-hmm. like I'm shocked Simeon didn't get approached for a deal. Like me too. Shocked. Yeah. Um, with how how well he was running those last few weeks. I mean, yes, dude. <laughs> I could I could be biting my tongue because I I kind of hated on the class of twenty twenty four. Like in your year, I was like, who's who's gonna run fast? But Me too. I don't yeah. I don't see a reality <laughs> where someone replicates his last two weeks of running. No. I mean, it was nuts what he did. And it was the insane. fact that he didn't get approached. And then like I'm I'm seeing high school kids who I've legitimately never heard of in this yeah. job get nil deals by New Balance. <laughs> I'm like, well, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, I completely so. agree. And like Simeon tried the whole thing with the Oakley thing. And like, I honestly thought he had a good shot. Like he wore those Oakley glasses at every race, like um, just stuff like that. I just, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, I don't know if I'm just in touch with the wrong people or what, but it feels like everyone's getting one in high school now. And we got nothing. And like, yeah, Simeon and Connor had a bigger fall than me. Simeon's last three weeks of high school running were, I mean, insane. And he didn't get one. I mean, he just went to whatever, 20,000 followers on Instagram. So. I don't know though. Who, who yeah, knows? my my other take is I am honestly I think it is a bad. We're just throwing out hot takes today. I think it's bad for the sport <laughs> how many people New Balance signed in a sign. Yeah, it does not it's... make it special, and I think it's a disservice to the athletes themselves, the high school athletes themselves. It's like, what do you get? Like, also from my perspective, it's like, what is the brand getting? Because these kids don't yeah. post about the company. Like, mm-hmm. I go on their page. You just, it's literally, it's like the payment to Sidious Mag to make the announcement post. It's like, wow, <laughs> what kind of marketing is that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't. And that's, um, oh, what was I say along with that? Um, so who else got signed? There's someone else I was getting that. Got, oh, um, I don't like talk about him and I don't even know his personal stuff. But like Aaron, like had the new balancing last year. And then I don't like, I don't really know what ever happened to that, but like he, I feel like he was one of like the first ones who got it or started wearing the new balance kits. And I was like, Oh, like that's, that's cool. Like, they were in the New Balance kits, and then all of a sudden, like everyone is at like the national meets. And now, like with yeah, it feels like high school track. Everyone's wearing their own kit. Like you 
So I don't know if maybe that's part of it because they're running these like, especially like someone like Sadie Engelhardt is running these like pro races as a high school and like can't wear a high school uniform since that she reps New Balance. Um, so I don't know if that goes into it. And they I'll have to ask him up. because I his, yeah. I don't think was ever official. And I think yeah. he was one of those, those kids. And I actually know kids to this day who this happens to. He was, uh, their kind of agreement was New Balance would just send them gear in an exchange okay. they would wear in a race, which is basically looking back on it, then I don't want to say taking advantage of kids because that, that sounds very poor yeah. choice of language. But it, I, I do wonder to what extent it was like budgets became new in like the fall yeah. of 23. And they were like, now we have a budget for NIL, whereas before their only like driving point was like free gear. Because I mean, you yeah. approach a kid five years ago and you're like, we'll give you free gear of a company you really like for a year. You just have to wear in a race. Almost every kid is saying yes. Yeah. It's just now because kids know they can make money off of it that they want the they're money. not willing to do that. Yeah. And I think with yeah. Aaron, it was it was early enough that NIL deals. I mean, did yeah. anyone have an NIL deal your senior year? Like during the season? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe Tenota or was his this fall? I can't remember this past fall. I don't I think remember he if got he got announced had after the not. season was over. I think he did. I think you I think you're right. Even like I mean, this is going back farther was NIL isn't as popular, but even like someone like Colin Solomon and Gary Martin who are only one year older than me, they didn't like, have anything and I thought and they were running just as well as Connor and Simi and all of us. So I just really exploded this last year. It feels like every like every month I'm seeing like more and more people get signed by new new balance. And like I'm still pretty in touch with like the class of twenty four and like high school running, I'd say. Like I still follow it just because I don't know I had a lot of fun running in high school. But there are some people I'm like, I sorry, I just don't don't know who you are. Um so, <laughs> <laughs> that feels bad. But most of most of like the friend the guys I'm friends with now, like I would say are the guys who are like kind of at the top with us last year. Um like like guys like True Griffith, Clay Shively, like those guys. Like um, I don't I don't even know. Like not trying to like throw out names, like get, like get anyone mad at me, but like I didn't even really know who JoJo Jordan was. But like I knew Drew. Um, JoJo Jordan didn't know who JoJo Jordan was. That kid was at Brooks <laughs> PR with us. When I was yeah, like, I don't really he was that. like, he was talking about his Brooks PR race on the podcast, and I was like, where were you? Yeah, I was like, I do not recognize you. Were you hiding all weekend? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, it's, like, so do you remember seeing him at all in those three day period? I mean, he was in your race. I remember, I remember like racing him. Like, I knew who he was, and like, I remember going through like when the Brooks Mile like heat like heat sheets got released. Like, I like I went and followed everyone because like, oh, I'm gonna be racing these guys, like meet new guys, and like for me, like last year mile, like the only guys I knew were like Devin and Cole. Like, I knew the other guys like Tayson and stuff. Um, but like there was like five or six names. I was like, oh, I've never met you, so I followed them and like, but. I don't know. Like, yeah, I feel like I haven't really, I, I don't I love know. Like, I remember him. I'm, yeah. I don't know. I'm super, super well. I'm sure he's a great guy. He's done he's super talented, done a lot of amazing things. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I'd say I, anyways, I'll say I still follow the class 24, but it feels like all like every day, like people are just getting more people are running like four or five. I'm like, damn, like, that's just, that's insane. Nice. Um, and I just don't know these kids. So the bar has been set crazy high for high school running. I think it's awesome. I think all these kids, um, and I think like the top end kids are still probably just as good as they've been the last five, 10 years, uh, especially the last two or three years. Um, but for sure the depth has been, I mean, insane. You just have like, whatever, 15 kids under 845 is insane. I ran 842 last year and that was the best time indoors. Um, and then like now 15 guys are breaking 845 at Arcadia. It's just, it's insane. High school running is at a crazy point right now. And I love it. I'm still a big fan of it and still enjoy watching it. So. You take the top seven guys, you can hand select them from the class of 23, and you take them against the top seven guys, Ooh. class of 24, in a mile. You score cross country style. Who wins? 23, not even close. We had five guys break. Do you four. think that'll we change had... after Festival of Miles, though? Uh, I don't, maybe. I don't know. I, so I haven't looked at Festival Miles. Festival Miles would be crazy. Are you, I don't know, if you, can, can you say, are you going back next this year or no? Uh, yeah, I got miles? confirmed this past week. Oh, that's, that's on awesome. my mind to bring okay. up to you later. Really? Okay. Um, awesome. But yeah, I, I don't know. Do you know like this specific, like do they have Eric Swinsky pacing again? Do you know or no? That was, that was crazy, a big bro. deal last year. I <laughs> mean, we got like deal. the best pacer in the world to come pace some random high school mile in St. Louis. It was, I mean, it was awesome. It was so good. Um, what I forgot to, what I said on my meeting with, uh, I don't know if I said it or forgot to say it, but it was in my mind. Uh, Cause I met with Hoka this morning to talk through it a little bit more. Oh, yeah. And I was like, it's kind of laughable that the boys' mile was way more impressive than the pro mile. <laughs> like straight yeah. up from a timing perspective, more guys broke four in the high school mile. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. So, anyways, I would still say I'm very like confident in like the guys in our class of 23, and it felt like we really were just like 
like the, well, there was like 10 or 15 of us, but especially all the guys that broke four, like we, I mean, we just, for me personally, it's like, I've said this a million times. Like I, I, I hate the credit to luck, but like everything went right. Like the weather was perfect. We had Eric Swinsky pacing. I had a great day. Um, and like, honestly, if I had to replicate it, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it over again. Like if you give me 10 shots on that, like differing days and like differing ways the race goes out, like I probably only do it once or twice out of 10. I mean, you, that's a little bit of stuff for us. I disagree. Really? You think so? You ran, you ran 401 high at Drake. Four, I think it was 402 low. I ran 402 twice. Okay. You're so right. y- you did that. Drake, horrible conditions. You don't have the atmosphere. And I would say you were less fit then than you were in St. Louis, although you ran on a stress fracture in St. Louis. Yeah. Here, <laughs> yeah. I think I think you break four. And I would actually also push back. I think the weather was actually kind of bad for running. It was so humid. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is fair. But it's also like summer in like like pretty southern Missouri. Dude, like, we're so it's hot like, walking around in St. Yeah. Louis with the arch and you're like, I'm Okay. Yeah, you're that. right. Yeah, I did take. I don't think you're giving yourself enough grace. In fact, I'd go so far as to say, in a better paced race, excuse me, not better paced race, better conditions. um, If you have a few more chances, I think you you would run like three fifty eight, three fifty nine high, or three fifty seven high potentially. Maybe this is just me being a Jackson Hydish fanboy. (laughs) I don't know. And then guys had off days like Connor. I think if you run that race again, he breaks four. Oh, Although you never know, with I think, yeah, you could, you could <laughs> <laughs> that a little bit. Does. Oh, well, and like guys like Clay, Taysen, they were all so close for one. So, anyways, my, I, I go back to my. I think the class, the class twenty four is really deep, and their top end is really, really good. But I think us, I think we would still win easily. In my, I think this class of twenty four is going to go to fast miles, and I, I do expect to see a guy or two break four. But I think it really is going to come down to the conditions. Who's pacing it is a big deal because no one ever wants to go. I mean, I've raced, I raced enough in high school, like a high school competitive miles. No one ever wants to take the pace. Connor was like the only guy who would be willing to do it. I still never understood why he did because it's just like not worth it. You're just because he's yeah, placing much. fourth. Yeah, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're just expending too much energy. Like, there's no point. So when you get a pacer, especially and like we would get high school pacers and like no diss anyone that ever paced me in high school. It was a high school pacer, but they're never as good as someone who's like literally a human metronome, like Eric Swinsky. Um, so anyways, all that to say, um, I would say class 23, definitely still on top. But I am excited to see Festival Miles. I'm, I'm excited for that. So, yeah. Okay. So I, I brought up the, the major list. Jojo Jordan, 359 mile PR. Clay Shively, four flat PR. Mm-hmm. Drew Griffith, four flat PR. And Nathan Neal, 401. I think all those guys break four. I think, yeah, I think they'll have a really good shot. And I, I think it's, and trust me, I want to see more guys break four. Like it's, I think it's awesome. The amount of people, I mean, there's what 21 of us now. Um, and I'd love for that list to grow. I've just always been not cynical, but like, I'd say just, just cause I went through it enough of like so many things can go wrong. And like, I mean, everyone knows that, but like, it's just, it's really hard. I, and I hate kind of like the, the, I would say it's not like taking credit away from anyone that's broken before, but the kind of, I guess, storyline has come up. I feel like the last year or two is like, oh, like the new sub four is like what was like the sub 405. I was like, I wouldn't say that's necessarily true. I just think we've just like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't think, I don't think it's as easy as everyone thinks it is. I think it's harder than most people think it is. And I think the kids that are doing it right now are doing it for specific reasons that they're doing to make themselves have a better shot at, not that the barriers get easy. For, right. if that makes sense. I agree. That's kind of I agree 100%. Thing, but, I also yeah. agree thinks class of 23 would win. And I think it's because um, I don't know from a depth perspective. I hope someone DM me if you put this together, like the top seven, both years PR wise. Yeah. But I think the the top of class of 23, of course, the conversation could change post festival miles. I don't see anyone in any reality beating Simeon because even yeah. his 339, um, which was in the week of two other races. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he wasn't even fresh. I mean, that that's like a three. 56 high conversion through 57 yeah. he ran through 57 at festival miles i don't think anyone's beating that and no. then i think like tenota he only had one shot at it uh he only yeah. like, ran the mile once i think his ceiling was higher you I, again 100%. i think you could have gone faster um rocky hansen is just so consistent he's not gonna yeah. have a bad race um so yeah i felt you guys he, he, i was just gonna say like you guys like even like remember like like aaron remember he dropped out Devin did not dude run Aaron well. that was one of the funniest parts of the weekend even the Hoka people were like you're racing <laughs> yeah he was like a week earlier he was like yeah I tore my IT man do you but think I'm we're do you think race. we're allowed I don't know who'd prohibit us but the the funny com- <laughs> the funny conversation on the breakfast table I mean people probably know people got 
paid to wear i actually don't know i i i I think that's like i don't know if that's a public thing i actually don't know i mean i I, we all talked about it but like we didn't really talk about it with other people because it just we didn't want to seem like like we were above everyone else if that makes sense like i didn't want to be like oh i got it and like you didn't or whatever but I don't know if Hoka is, I wonder if they're probably doing that again this year, honestly. It's a, it was a great marketing strategy to have like Simeon win and then hold up the, whatever, the Hoka spike to his ear. I mean, I was, well, that Instagram, actually like, was probably the only NIL type thing. It wasn't like NIL, yeah. NIL, but kind but, of. Yeah. But anyway, no, I was, was really going to say the funny, the funniest thing was like, <laughs> people were like, Aaron, you're not going to get paid. You didn't finish the race. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. that? Yes. <laughs> we yes. were like, bro, bro came just for the paycheck. Like, he, yeah, he yeah. had no intent of finishing the race. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so yeah. funny. I oh. do remember that, though. He was so random. And he, I think he got out to the front, like, immediately. And he had, yeah. like, the long, uh, like, the long leg, leg sleeve. Yeah. Was he wearing dude, that at yeah. Festival Miles? Yeah, I, I think, think so. Like he wore it at New Balance outdoors, too. Did he run Brooks? I don't even remember. Yeah, he did. He did run Brooks. Yeah, I think he finished Brooks. But a yeah. lot of jokes okay. were made. He was so guys. banged like, up. Yeah. Yeah. He, just, he was so banged just, up the last month of the senior year. <laughs> you're running on 1% just so you can experience these races. Like the experiences. Yeah. yeah. So funny. I mean, I don't know. I think it sounds bad, but like, I don't know. I'd almost do the same. I mean, the experiences were. Oh, awesome. 100%. Like, I would yeah. definitely do the same. You, yeah, you think 100%. I would pass up a cruise in Seattle? Heck no. Yeah. And, dude, and yeah, be seriously. around with like your friends who you never see from around the country. Oh, yeah. No, I respect that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. watching festival of miles this year okay first thing a thought for you um mm-hmm. are you gonna come to it dude i was thinking about it. i actually i mean it's the problem is obviously well this is a part of a whole different conversation but so when i was um like when i was a little bit more banged up and thought that i was gonna have to take only like a couple weeks off versus like i ended up taking eight weeks off um i thought i was only gonna have to take like two or three weeks off i was thinking like oh i'm probably gonna miss accs regionals and nationals but I was actually thinking about if they let not if they let me, but I, I think they would invite me back. I'd go race the pro race or even or even pace the high school mm. race. I want to do that, but I'm obviously not in good enough shape to do that. I'm at rock bottom right now. Um, but I I might still go and watch just because I mean it is only like five or six hours. And the only thing I was thinking about is I was like if Connor goes, and I think I'm more likely to go. I don't know if I go just just like my dad would go and watch, but I don't know if I just go me and my dad just because I'm not as close with the, like the. And you, yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh, I'm not as close with the seniors below us. And I wouldn't want to, like, come and, like, intrude on them, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to be, like, the old guy that's like, oh, like, I was here last year or whatever. Like, I want them to have their own year, too. But there is still a chance that I'm, I'm – I'm, if Connor goes, I think I have a better chance of going. And just to see him hang out, get a run in or whatever. And it's also just such a great – like, it's such a great track meet. It's still – I far and away, like, all my, all my like, teammates say Penn Relays is their favorite race just because – I mean, Penn Relay is also awesome. I've never been, but Festival Miles. Imagine still... calling a, a race in a historic stadium where it's 40 degrees and rains the best track race. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I so think that's... I think Penn Relays is so cool. That's the definition yes. of aura, as they'd say on social these days. But, yeah. For high school, Festival Miles is definitely like it's the best meet in the country. It's the best run meet in the country. It's not even close. It's such, it's always such nice weather. The venue is perfect. Like the fact that they pack all those people in that small track is so cool oh the atmosphere like how, is unlike anything oh i mean the, the venue is perfect because it's yes. oh, it's too small but that's what makes it yes. perfect exactly for us like when we race at nike outdoors it's this huge hayward stadium that has like two thousand people on it and you're like all right well you can't even hear anyone so there's this festival miles i specifically remember it's literally like they've got like like dj music playing and like the drums go like they have it's just loud it's such a fun atmosphere so I was going to say, the only reason I think I would go just because it's such a fun atmosphere, even just to go watch track for four or five hours. There's a chance one of my teammates, like my high school teammates, goes and runs, I think. Um, so we'll see. But he's also What kind of shape so. are you in? Like, are you are you running these days? We'll get into this in a minute. So I I just had my first run this morning. Uh, it was five minutes. Oh, right. So was, <laughs> yeah. So okay. How fast back. do you think you can run an all-out four? Would oh, you even God. be allowed I mean, to run like, an all-out four? I mean, I could. I don't know if it hurt my sacrum or not. I would run. Oh, dude! I don't even know if I could break. Actually, I always say that, but like, I remember I could break sixty. I think like fifty-six, realistically. Okay, hop because I'm in mascot brace. Oh, dude, maybe (laughs) that would be awful. (laughs) I'm in the hot mascot. I probably break. (laughs) That would be so funny. Okay, well, my idea is I'll talk. I'll talk to you this off air. You should pitch to Hoka. Mm -hmm uh coming as like one you could be like 
I think it'd be cool to have a, a guy from the year before. We'll talk. My business mind will come up with a way to get you there. But I think it'd be cool <laughs> from their perspective to have a guy there who broke four last year, whether it's like yeah. be one of the guys who hands the guys who break four the trophy or like, you know, how they yeah. get like the flags. Yeah, 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 like that, yeah. That's or like sick. help with yeah. like uh, announcing or I think it would be so cool from the events perspective to have someone there who broke four the year before. And I don't think I don't I, think yeah. any of the guys would come that I could think of. Unless to notice Simeon's still racing, Oregon, and then Simeon and Simeon still at school, I think until like late June. That dude goes. I mean, he doesn't go to school, but his his school <laughs> year lasts until like late June. So right, and then but, Rocky, um, like, and then doubt. Rocky's probably still racing too. I think. I mean, he'll race regionals for sure, and then I think he'll make nationals. Um, so yeah, that would be. I mean, I would totally. I mean, I if I would pitch it to Hoka or if they allow me to, I would totally go do that. That'd be awesome. I'd love to, kind of like what Cole okay. did with Hoot Locker this year. I would totally do that's that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, we'll we'll cook something up <laughs> off air. I'm so excited because I I pitched the idea like a few months ago of coming to the meet, and then I didn't hear back, and then I heard back this past week. And at that point, it was so mm. close that I didn't think I was going back. And I told mm. him I was like, Festival of Miles will always have a special place in my heart because it was the first meet that I did like event marketing at, and it was so fun. Yeah. Like, do you remember like Dude, yeah. mini mics? Like, I I picked. Dude, um, yeah. It was I did awesome. like this, the short interviews right before the races. People yes, ate yes. That stuff up, bro. No, so it was funny. awesome. The publicity on that meet was so so good. I think you did such a great job, and like, I mean, everyone did, but like, I thought it was cool that New Gen was there too. But Festival of Miles had a lot of people going. Like, it was just it's cool to like one of the best feelings ever is when you finish a race and then it's talked about all over on social media. Like, it's just such a fulfilling thing. And maybe that's sounds bad that like. I like seeing that on my phone, but it is, it's like a fulfilling thing of like, Oh, this is cool. People care about this. This is like, just makes you, it shows know, running is relevant. Important. Yeah. Yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. And, and like a lot of my friends back home, like before I went to college, like a lot of them weren't runners. So that's like kind of how they'd stay updated on my racing. And like, I was, they always, like, it was always nice to like have them like reshare the stuff or whatever. So I think, I mean, this is overarching thing we've talked about, I feel like a million times, like just some more publicity we can get on high school running, especially because I feel like college is really good right now, but the, publicity on it um but high school running like it's such a special sport and like so many people can participate that i think i mean it, this should be the same amount of publicity that there was all of last year too so mm-hmm. but, well hopefully yeah. see at festival miles that'd be so cool it's also what if do you think it'd feel weird like i remember asking this to call out footlocker being at the race and feeling all the feelings of like pre-race race day but not running in it and knowing yeah, not running in it that would be weird yeah, I've never done anything like that. That would be weird. Because you ran that two 100%. years in a row, right? Mm-hmm. I ran there my junior year and senior year. Yeah, that that would be weird. That would be, huh. yeah, that's 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 weird to think about. Because you get all the anxious jitters, like everything, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm just watching. Like, I'm not racing. <laughs> so yeah, I was I so know. scared. I was so nervous watching you guys because I mean that had to be the most hyped up meet race i mean oh i think yes. the podcast series with connor and simeon definitely did a good part of that but like it got talked yeah. about so much and connor yes. and simeon were genius talking about alan webb's record knowing dang well they weren't going after <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the, i remember like the letter on that day was like alan record alan webb's record is it saves it like it lasts another day and it's like no one thought no one thought they were no. gonna get it but by stating there's it, no it's way it's like they got so many eyes oh a hundred percent i remember talking to my coach that either that morning or the day before he was like He's like, if they actually do go out 156, he was like, do not go out 156. He was like, you – like, that sounds bad because, like, I always want to, like, keep in my mind that, like, oh, like, like I have these, like – like, I I feel like I'm very rational in the sense of, like, I always come in with these goals of, like, all right, I, like, my goal was, like, going to Festival Miles was to win and, like, run sub four. But there's always that little, like, thought back in my mind. It's like, all right, what if you could run, like, 355, though? But, like, going out in 156 is just dumb. Like, you're going to come back in 210 and run 406 or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds bad. At least for me at the time, I know I could not have gone out in 156. I would have. What's the fastest so you've start... ever gone out that you've blown up in? Ooh, in a for a mile? Or just Anything. in general? I feel like I don't, people have a honest, lot of cross like... stories when I ask this. They'll go yes, out too fast. Yes, that's for the mile. true. Okay, honestly, NXN, I went out way too fast, but I ended up running really well. Um, but my first 400 was 62, which was insane. And then also my first 800 was like 209. And my first mile was like 433, 432. And then my second mile was five flat. So I, I, I but then I came back and I think my third mile was like 455. And like no one ran crazy, crazy fast. And that's how like the pack went out. So you had to go out like that to put yourself in the, like the top group or whatever. Um, but I remember hitting like a mile and a half. I'm like, oh boy, this is, this is going to be a grind <laughs> all the way back home. This is not fun. That might be the hardest I've ever like 
it's hard to say like that's the hardest I've ever pushed myself, but that is like the most I've ever felt like, wow, this sucks. And I just like have to get through this. Whereas sometimes it comes a little like races are fluctuate a little bit. Like sometimes you'll run like four. Like I remember I would run like when I ran 402 at Drake, like that felt almost harder than the 359 FSO miles. Um, just because and some of that's like to do with weather and stuff. Um, but I remember at NXN, my senior year, I was like, this is I just went out way too hard. But again, it ended up working out fine. I ran OK. I was happy with how I raced. I was ecstatic with how I raced. So, yeah. Now running for Duke and being in the NCAA and like really yes. hoping to toe the line for a cross meet soon, like a NCAA cross meet, um, not NCAA, well that too, but like NCAA championship <laughs> cross country meet. You know what I mean? Does it scare yep. you seeing the past two years go out two thirty for the K? I mean, oh yes, hundred percent. It's insane, and also like I've I've talked about this all year of like how excited and like especially the last two months since I've been injured, how excited I'm to get back to cross country. Like I love cross country. And I keep reminding myself, I got to run 10K. I've never done that in my life. I've only run 5K. I've never ran farther than that for a race. Now I have to double it. And especially when guys are going out at like four, 10 mile pace, the first 800. I have like, it's kind of a fun, like I've kind of tried to embrace it. Just like, well, we're just going to, I always say the, like, I always say the phrase like, well, we're just going to figure it out. Right. Like, and that's how I'm trying to embrace it. Of like, it's going to be hard. And it's going to be weird. Like racing for 30 minutes. I've never had to like stay locked in for that long, if that makes sense. But, um, I'm really excited for it. I'm excited for the challenge. It is either going to be really fun or really terrible, but it could also be both. So <laughs> I'm excited. I think 8K will suit me a little better. Like I honestly think like, especially like when I got to Duke, like everyone pegged me as a miler and like even 800 guy because I ran 150 and 359. But I remember the whole time, like my long-term goal is still be a 5K guy and be like vying for an NCAA title my senior, hopefully fifth year um, in cross country. And like so much stuff has to happen before then. That's a long-term goal of mine. But I've always came up with the idea of like, I think I'm way more aerobic based than most people think. And like, I don't know, maybe it was just cause I did just like break four and that's why everyone thinks I'm a miler, but I, I think I have a really good shot at being a great AK and 10 K runner. I think AK will be a really good distance for me. Um, versus some of those speedsters, especially when you get to college dude. like, I mean, I don't know, just closing to 1500 is like in 52 is just like something that seems like otherworldly to me. Like I'd rather try and run 420 pace for 3.1 miles than try and close a 1,552 or whatever it is. So I don't know, but who knows? That's what, that's what college is for. We'll figure it out. But yeah. So the last time we talked was before you stepped onto Duke's campus, take me through kind of getting the listeners up to speed on, on recent months for you. You get to, you get to college from my recollection, summer training was going super well. Take me through the cross Mm -hmm. season and ultimately the injury that, that ended it. Yeah, so I um yeah, last time we talked is before I stepped on campus. I um I obviously obviously finished my high school running last year in like middle of June or late June at um Nike Outdoors. Um took my two or three weeks off, went to um Europe, like had a great Europe trip with my family. And kinda got back that first day of Europe. I was like, all right, completely reset, like completely new world I'm about to step into, right? Like everything in my life is about to change. Um and was really, really excited for it and like still had a great year. But um as far as like running was going, like I wouldn't say I was worried, but I was very like, I was very like thoughtful of the idea of like, all right, I'm going from being a pretty big, like a bigger fish in a small pond to a small fish in a big pond. And I had no idea how cross country was going to work. I had no idea how I was going to be able to run 10 K. I was still only running like 50, 55 miles a week, which is, I mean, it's a solid amount, but like compared to the guys that are running eighties and nineties and are 25 or 22 and 23 and I'm an 18 year old kid. um, I had no idea I was going in. So I was just going to go into it. Like, with a good mindset of like, all right, we're just going to see what happens. Maybe I'll redshirt. Maybe I won't. Um, and then honestly, like summer training was going well, thought it was going great. Um, and then I think it was the second or third week on campus. All of a sudden, like my shin started flaring up. I was like, Oh, I'm just having constant shin splints. Like it really just won't go away. Took a couple of days off, tried to get back into running, didn't go away. And I ended up with my first, I mean, I've, I've had a stre- couple stress stressors in the past, but like they've been more low grade or more low key. I had a grade four stress fracture in my tibia. Um, the thing basically like broken half. Um, I was in a boot for four weeks, um, out for running for 12 weeks. And for the first time in my life, I remember like, especially like week one or two wasn't as bad, but like starting into week three, four, five, six, seven, stuff like that. I was just like, wow, man, I mean, this just, this sucks. Like there's no other way around it. I mean, I think I still think about it now and like, I'll get into what happened this spring later, hopefully. But, um, I just, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough fall, dude. I mean, I, for the first time ever in my life, I'm not running every day, like, and as long with like me, like running been a, been a huge part, maybe the most important thing in my life for the last three or four year, years of my life. And then all of a sudden I get to college where it's this whole new thing, right? Like new coaches, my family's not with me. I'm living on my own, new best friends. Like 
I lived in Iowa for 18 years. All of a sudden I'm in a whole different state. And like that adjustment is probably, I, I think in the 19 years I've been alive, that's the hardest adjustment I've ever had to go through in my life, which is crazy, right? Like, I mean, it sounds bad that like, or not sounds bad, but I'm almost grateful that's the hardest thing I've had to go through in my life. People have gone through way worse stuff than that, but um, it was, it was hard. It was really hard. And I, I think I was just really, I don't know if ignorant is the right word, but I remember my senior year, kind of, I was racing really well and seeing all these guys who are a year above me as freshmen, just wondering, like, why are they not improving? Like, why are they not PRing? Like, what's going wrong? And uh, mine was a little different because I got injured, but I think I was just very ignorant to the fact of, like, wow, there is a lot that goes into the college transition. And I just, <laughs> I honestly just kind of got screwed. <laughs> and it was little things that piled up. Um, and I ended up coming back and, like, being healthy again for a couple more months. But my fall was just, there's just a lot. Like, for the first time ever, like, we, I don't, we talked about it a little bit, but I feel like I've, I've told this story so many times, like the first time ever you're living on your own. Like I just kind of didn't realize how much my parents did for me when I was in high school. And I, I took them for granted a hundred percent stuff like that. And for the first time ever, like, I mean, getting food isn't hard, but it's harder. Like when you live at home, you can walk three feet to go get as much food as I want for my pantry. I can, yeah. Or I can get in a car and go drive. I so know what you're talking to. about. <laughs> Yes, it's so much different of like, all right, now I got to walk to this dining hall and I have to swipe and sit down. It's just different. And like I had a snacks in my dorm, but like I was way under eating and that was one of the biggest pieces that went into it. And then another thing of like sleep, like I got there and all of a sudden I'm like, all right, well, I got to go to all these school, like all this. I mean, I went to, I mean, I, I took school seriously in high school, but I got to walk around campus all day and then I got to get back to my dorm. And then all of a sudden we have like 630 practice and I'm like, I am getting six and a half, seven hours of sleep for like two or three weeks in a row. I'm like, all right, this is just this. And I didn't really realize it at the time. Cause at the time it was just an adjustment. But then when it all happened, I was I, I'm in a boot and I'm like reflecting, I'm like, wow, how did, how did I not see this coming? Like, I mean, not that I, I, anyone should deserve a stress fracture, but when I, there was things I could point to, it felt like I was like, yeah, I was, was not doing that well. Like, wow, I just didn't really think about that. And it was just cause my mind was so absorbed with everything else of like trying to figure out all, all the adjustment period. Right. So I just rambled for a, a long time, but that this, this fall and or this last fall and the, the transition was hard. And, um, I don't, I don't wish anybody to have the fall I had. Um, I, I mean, again, I, I still loved college and it's awesome, but I just, it was really tough. So, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but your training in the fall, at least from following you on Strava, one of the few guys who of your class who could keep strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was like going super well. Like you were getting yes. a lot of fitness. You were doing some, like, yes. I would call them like PRs, at least in terms of like distance. Yeah. Workouts, like doing a lot mm-hmm. of, did that make the injury all the more difficult where it wasn't like yeah. the buildup to the injury was like crappy training. Like you were training at a yeah. really high level. And that's how I felt. And I think, I don't, yeah, it was like all of a sudden, like I kind of step on campus the first week or two and I'm like, I'm like, I'm first of all, like six weeks behind everyone. Cause a lot of guys started in June. Cause my season just went so much longer. Everyone else was like guys who finished ACCs last year. Um, like they were done by like whatever, May 15th. And then all summer to build up or I started my build up like July 4th weekend, which is, and then was on campus by August 15th. That was only six weeks. And then I'm doing these workouts with these top guys who are all, I mean, have run way more miles than me. Like at the time were more fit than me, like way more experienced than me. Um, and I was like, wow, like I, I'm gonna have a shot to like make our top five, top three. I'm gonna be able to contribute. And training was going really well. The one thing I will say is like, although like, cause a lot of the, I was like, when I first got injured, I was like, well, was it a training thing? Was I trained too hard? Cause I think that's what most people go to the first time they get like a serious injury. It was like, all right, you're just pushing it too hard. And well, like I really wasn't running that much volume. I was running 50, 55 miles a week. Like I said, which was not crazy for me. That's around where I ran in high school. Um, so it wasn't a crazy bump for me. It felt like the train was like, I, I got my, like some of the workouts I was doing, like you said, were great. Cause there was so much volume, but at the same time, I think it was just too much. Like I, like I would have just like Tuesday workouts where I'd run 13 miles and like an eight mile workout. And like in high school, I just did not do that. Like I trained hard in high school and like my teammates know this now I talk about like, I did, I, I was kind of more in high school of a high intensity, low volume workout guy. Like I would just hammer like five by one K or like hammer eight by 400 versus now like my coach, like coach rec is telling me like, all right, do whatever 10 or 12 by K at like, 305 310 um and then usually that ends up going faster because i'm like oh i'm not pushing my heart self hard enough and so it was just a high i tried to withstand or like a, keep the, the intensity the same while the volume was increasing which was just not the right idea um and i just i just i don't know i paid the price which sounds bad but um yeah I, training was going well it was it was it was unfortunate i thought i thought things were going looking really well i thought i was it was really sad i was six days out from my first ever collegiate meet and then it was that saturday i was like i just 
felt like someone was literally hammering a nail into my shin. Like it was just exploding with every step. And I was like, I got to stop something. Something's wrong. So yeah. You get back, you get healthy, you start training again. Take me through kind of the period between after cross and that injury you mentioned mm-hmm. and when the next injury happened. Yeah. So I, um, I, I, I finished that tibial stress fracture, 12 weeks, 12 weeks of hell, finished it, was got back into it, started around spring or Thanksgiving break, started to start running again and like build back up and super slow progression. And it was, it was awesome. Like, I mean, I'll talk about it again soon, but like, especially with me today, like when you come back from like an injury from like 12 weeks and you even have that first run of like five or 10 minutes, doesn't matter how fat or out of shape you feel. It is the most euphoric thing ever. Like just be able to put shoes, like lace up your shoes, go out for a run and be like, wow, I can't believe I've been missing this the last 10, 12 weeks of my life. Like it is, it was insane. So, um, it was slow. It was a really slow buildup. I didn't do like the first eight, 10 weeks I got back. I didn't do really do workouts. Um, like my first, my first run was like five minutes. And then like my second one was like seven minutes. It was a super slow progression. Um, built back up to 50 miles a week. Um, went home for winter break, whatever it started. We kept building, kept building through January. And I'd say early February is when I first started feeling like, all right, old Jackson's coming back. Like started being able to rip some 200s and some spikes, started ripping some like ladder workouts, working on some speed. And like, as it got towards middle, late February, I was like, like things are heating up. Like this is going well. Like running's awesome again. Like I'm running with my teammates. I'm doing the thing I love every day. Like it was just, it was awesome. Like I just, I was like, wow, I can't believe I missed this in the fall, 12 whole weeks off. Um, And then early March, middle of March, I started really getting into shape. And like, honestly, I still say like, Right before I got my sacral stress fracture, which I'll we'll talk about in a couple seconds, it's what took me out this spring. But I'd say like right up until the week of spring break, I, I was the most fit I'd ever been in my life. I think I confidently could have ran 340 at Raleigh in my opener. I was I was running workouts I'd never run before. My mileage was great. I felt great. I was recovering well. Um, and then I go on spring break, whatever, have a great time. Like I'm still running. And then go on this long run and it's like 12, 13 miles or whatever. It goes well, like end the spring break off well, like cap a good week of training. I'm like, all right, I got 10 days to Raleigh release. This is awesome. And it wasn't even during the run, but like after the run, all of a sudden I'm like walking around, like, why does my lower back hurt? Like, this is, this is weird. Like I never felt this pain before. I was like, well, maybe I slept on it wrong. Cause I wasn't in like my normal dorm bed or whatever. Um, take that next Sunday off. And it's still kind of sore walk around. I'm like, this is weird. Whatever. Run Monday on it, like seven or eight miles pain for the whole time. But I'm like, all right, maybe it's just like a tight glute. I'll work it out. End up working out on Tuesday. Probably have the best workout of my entire life that Tuesday, but pushed it way too hard and pushed through the pain. After that Tuesday workout, I couldn't walk. I I, literally, I probably needed crutches. I never went going on them. Um, but I remember walking around. I was like, it literally feels like someone is – I use the phrase a lot, but like it feels like someone's putting a nail into my back and hammering it. Like it just – it's exploding every step. Um, and so then I go to my trainer. I'm like, all right, well, this this doesn't feel good. Something is wrong. So I wait, I wait a week or 10 days, get the MRI or whatever, come back, and it's a completely displaced sacral stress fracture, grade four. I'll, I'll, I should send you a picture of my bone. I mean, it's – it's, I can't believe I walked on it. I mean, it's literally, cra- it's like my pelvis is completely cracked. Oh. Um, it was not good. The good thing is, I mean, Simeon would kind of, I remember actually, because when I first started having this pain, Simeon had a sacral stress fracture in the winter. I was kind of like, dude, this is weird pain. Like, does this sound like something you had? I just remember him texting me and being like, yeah, dude, that sounds exactly what I had. And I was like, damn. And that was before I got the MRI back. But the telltale sign of like, just my back hurt so bad. I just went so deep into my glue. And I was like, this just can't be muscle. It just can't be. Um, so again, I, I, I'm, I didn't get a boot or crutches, but again, I, I went back to the doctor eight weeks off and I mean, it's heartbreaking. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I just, I mean, it's just crap luck. I just got put in a bad situation and, um, it feels like I'm rambling. But the first time, like when I had a tibial stress fracture in the fall, it felt more like I could point to things. I was like, all right, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing that wrong or not doing it wrong, but I could do this better. This time it felt like it was just completely out of the booth. Things were going so well. And again, such a heartbreaking moment for like six days or seven or eight days before like I'm geared up to race my first collegiate race. I'm so excited. All these big goals, goals from outdoor. And then all of a sudden I'm like, shit, man, I'm just back, back to square one. And so I, I took, I mean, it, it, I'd lie. I mean, it, it wrecked me mentally. I mean, I, I mean, I'll be vulnerable or whatever, but I remember hearing the news. I called my dad, just broke down crying for about 60 minutes and just was like, what is wrong? Like what's, what's going wrong? What am I doing wrong here? And like, just thoughts started to creep in of like, am I cursed? And like, I, I'll even admit, like, I, I don't know, like, am I at the wrong school? Is Duke cursed? Like what, like what's wrong? What was going wrong? And how do I do this better? And like, just this huge identity crisis, especially the second time around of like, all right, like, well, what do I do with my life now? Like running has absorbed my entire life for the last few years of my life. And my senior year, I had, I mean, I was on top of the moon doing all these great things, setting 
like PRs left and right, like like shattering childhood dreams. I mean, breaking four in the mile was a dream. My sister's been a little kid, and and all of a sudden I'm sitting in my dorm room crying, like, God, what what is my what is my life? Like, what what am I doing here? Like, what what am I doing? And um, I don't know. That's 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 a pretty sad thought, but it's it's true, and it's it's what happened. And I'm in a lot better place now. And it, it took talking through my teammates, and my coaches, and some professional help. Um, and I'm doing a lot better now. But there, this year has been hard, man. It's it's been it's been a journey, and I'm glad I'm finally on the other end of it. Um, but this, yeah, I mean, there was there was some there was some nights where tears were streaming down the face, and especially that second time around. The first time was heartbreaking. The second time felt like I mean, literally, someone I mean punched a hole through my entire gut and stomach and heart. I just heartbreaking. That's that's the only way to put it. But um, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I'm back now after eight or ten weeks off. I had my first run today, five minutes. Um, so yeah, we're we're on the other side, but yeah. What would you say to someone listening who experiences or is going through something similar to you where they didn't just experience one setback, but they came back from it, the positive things were happening, and then another setback came? What would be some advice to that individual to get through this really, really tough time? Yeah, I mean, obviously, or honestly, like, I... I, I, the only reason I can say this advice is because I got the same thing told to me and like, it's, it's a little cliche, cliche and cringy or not, not cringe, which is a little cliche of like, no matter how many times you get like the, whatever, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. It matters how many times you get back up. Um, I mean, there was multiple times of this year, especially after a second, I was like, like I kind of said, like maybe my body's not made for this. Maybe it is just time for me to medically retire. And that's, it's a crazy thing to say after only being like a freshman in college. But I remember after my first one, after 12 weeks in the running, I swear to myself, I was like, this ever happens again, I'm, I'm medically retired. I won't, I won't go through this again. I, I won't put my head and body through the stress and like, I mean, sounds, I mean, really like almost gruesome, but like the torture I put myself and my mind through of like, God, I just, I don't know what to do. Um, sounds dumb. And I, I for anyone in listening that wants the advice sounds dumb, but like, keep, just keep getting up and things do get better. They do. It's just in the moment it is so, so, so hard. And it's hard to hear from anyone. Like everyone's saying, Oh, it gets better. Like, like Oh, it goes by fast. And Oh, you'll get back to it. And and it's true though. It's, it's, it's a hundred percent true of like, it, it just, it gets better and you just got to wait on it and kind of go through a struggle. And that's, that's the worst part about it. And the kind of phrase of like, there's beauty in the struggle. I don't know if I've quite seen the beauty yet, um, but <laughs> there's, it, there's definitely some struggle. And I was really lucky. One of my, my, my best friend and one of my, my roommate at Duke Alden, um, he had struggled with a lot of high school or injuries in high school. And um, he helped me so, so much this entire semester. My whole team did. Um, and that kind of goes on the big, like the bigger topic of get, get yourself a support system and support network and lean on your friends, lean on your teammates, lean on your parents, lean on your coaches. That's what I did. And, um, they're the only reason I'm, I'm, I'm still running today. Honestly, I can say that with full confidence. Um, the reason I'm still running is because I had those guys surrounding me and picking me up and no matter what kind of shit show I was going through, those guys, I mean, went through it all with me and they're my best friends. And, um, I, I owe everything to them for me, putting them in the position I'm in even today with just running five minutes. But, um, lean on your teammates, lean on your friends, lean on your parents and your family more than anything. Um, I got a lot of support from them, but, um, again, like things will get better. It's just, sometimes it can be a long or a light at the, a, a light at the end of a long tunnel. Um, but you'll get there eventually. And, um, it might just, it's just going to take a little bit. And I'm very much a realist person. I'm not a very, like, I, I wouldn't say I'm pessimistic. I'm, I'm, I'd say I'm optimistic, but I'm also realistic. Like our all right, yes, I'm out for eight to 10 weeks, but I'm, I'm not going to tell myself like this is going to be sunshine and rainbow. It's like, it's, it's going to suck, but you got to get through it. And it's going to make, it makes running even more beautiful. I mean, I, I'll, I'll never, ever, ever take running again for granted. I mean, f- after what I've been through this year, I mean, like I said, even today, just running five minutes. I mean, it was just, it's just euphoric. It's amazing. I love it. I love this sport so much. And it's, it's given me so much and it's taken me, taken so much from me. It feels like this last year, but at the end of the day, my relationship with this sport is just, it's all love. I love it. So. Yeah, bro, it's getting me in my feels, man. <laughs> I know, right? I'm sorry. I, I knew it. I was gonna get vulnerable and emotional. I'm sorry. No, dude, that's good, <laughs> and it's gonna help so many people. And it's actually crazy. Like, I don't know. I think people appreciate these conversations. Well, our conversations all over the place. In the first thirty minutes, <laughs> yeah. we're laughing our heads off. But like, people appreciate <laughs> the. It, in my experience, having on like the best of the best. And then having on mediocre people who are vulnerable, I'm not calling you mediocre. I think you're amazing. <laughs> but like genuinely people, I've had guests on that like from an accomplishment perspective, don't really compare to like the best of the best people I have on. 
And the yeah. people that are like, quote, mediocre, but are super vulnerable about hard, how hard their journey is, those episodes get shared so much more, so much yeah. more than like the the average super, super good episode. And I think it's totally because like everyone experiences this, this similar things. And even if it's not yeah. like a 12 week stress fracture, it's like everyone can relate to a setback and any athlete that yes. says they haven't had a setback is either lying or they're not training yeah. hard enough. <laughs> They're one yeah. of the people that comments on my Instagram that a three mile week is a three <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah. Another subject for another time. So I, I do really appreciate your vulnerability. And I do think I texted you this after your first injury. My favorite example is Sean McGordy, who I think yeah. has had 100%. six major surgeries in the last seven years. And the guy like has made world team after world team. <laughs> yeah. He's like he places consistently Super top talented. three at USC. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. 100%. And it's because he and, won't give up on himself. Like he just refuses yes. to. And that's kind of what I've talked about a lot with my, my parents and my teammates and just like guys all over the country. It feels like kind of going back to like our class of 23. I mean, if you look at all of us, I mean, we've, we've all had a tough year. I mean, me and Simeon, Connor, Devin and Cole are finally running well. I don't know about Devin, but I know Cole had an injury when he first got to school and he's running well now. He's going to see people chase super well. Devin ran super well in the 15 at Big 12s. Tenota has had an amazing year. That kid is I mean, super talented, but like even look at Rocky had an injury. Um, he ran super well in the fall and then was injured for a little bit during the winter. So like it's been very, very, I guess, reassuring to me to feel like – and that's it took a lot of people telling me and me telling myself of like I'm not cursed. I kind of just got bad luck and there's some things I am going to change, but this happens to everyone. And I, I, I never wish it on anyone, but going through setbacks is a piece of running. It's a piece of life 100%. And so being able to push through those setbacks and be able to like get through them and be better on the other side and have guys to surround yourself with. I mean, it's been great having Connor and as, as terrible as it sounds, it's, it's been great having guys like Connor and Simeon kind of go through something I'm similar with and talking to them. And especially like I, I've, I've always, I don't know if I've ever even told this, but I look up to him a ton. He's an extremely talented runner. I love the way I love how humble he is. I love how he holds himself. And for him to kind of give me some insight and wisdom of like, dude, like I've I went through this, like I've, I've gotten too stressed for my freshman year and he was racing at an even higher level than me. And like to hear him kind of have the same thoughts as me. I'm like, wow, I guess, it's not just me, right? It's, it's, it's not just me. I'm not just cursed. And um, there's more to it than that. But I mean, yeah, it's just, it's been a long year. And um, <laughs> I've, I've just been really lucky to have a good support system and people supporting me. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we come back. And this is the end. One, last one I told my doctor, I was like, after a second, I was like, this, this is never happening again. I know I said that last time. I hope time, I but... never see you again, respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hope I never see you again. Yeah. Well, even that's the same thing with my trainer. Like I spend like four or five days a week with her and she's awesome. Um, I, I really, really like her, but I was kind of just like, well, I, I hope I don't see you as much next year. I just don't want to be in here five times a week all year long for just stress fractures and stuff like that. So I've got some things I'm going to work on and going to get strong finally, like hopefully put on some muscle and like not look like finally like, like grow into my body and look like a male instead of a 17 year old scrawny six, three kid, um, start eating more, sleep more, just all that kind of stuff, stay on top of it. And just really more than anything, like I said something about in my Strava caption today, but I feel like the last year has just been so hard for me. The more than anything, what I want back is just being able to be happy and love the sport I'm doing and just be able to step outside every day. And no matter if it's five minutes or an hour and a half long run, whatever it is, is just step outside every day and take every run um, and just be happy with it and just realize how blessed I am to even be able to run and do the thing I love and run with my teammates and run with my best friends and um, enjoy the sport. So that's that's kind of where my mindset's at now. I've been again, it's been a roller coaster of emotion. It's been a roller coaster of an hour talking with you, but it's been a roller coaster <laughs> of a year just feeling all these emotions again. Um, but I'm in a really good spot right now. I'm I'm really excited for the future, and I'm I'm really excited for our team next year. And I'm excited for myself. I'm I think I've kind of I don't know maybe flown on the radar last year, kind of fallen off the map. And I'm I'm excited to put myself back out there and see all these guys really really fast in the ACC. And I know I can compete with them. I know I can win an ACC championship in a couple of years. So. That's my goal, and I got a lot to do before then. But yeah, yeah, you did kind of mention your mindset there. But like coming into these few months of the summer, where, where's your head yeah. at, and what are some like tangible yeah. things you want to accomplish and experience? And how much has your mindset shifted from like, oh, I want to like you know run seventy miles a week to like all these yes. crazy training goals to just like I just want to enjoy it and be healthy and whatever the yes. result of that is, I'll take. Exactly. And that's exactly how I felt. I'm actually going to um, try and write out a training plan here for, I mean, I'll have some help, but collaborative training plan over the summer and realize, yes, I do want to kind of build up to that 65, 70 miles a week range of trying to get an aerobic base down so I can run 10K. Um, but while I do have those goals in mind, these fitness goals in mind, these times, like, yeah, I want to be here at the ACC meet. I want to do this next year. And this is the times I want to do 
number one, the most important thing again is like I kind of said is I want to be able to have fun with the sport, enjoy it, love doing it every day, and just not take stuff for granted. And and when it comes to tangible things of what I want to do this summer, of like I just want to take care of myself better. And I think I always do take care of myself. And that's one of the things we talked about off air. I got I got a whoop band for myself and kind of look at myself, make sure I'm sleeping enough, make sure I'm eating enough, stay on top of my water, and just little things like that. Because little things like that can add up so 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 fast. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. And that's something I didn't even realize of how like just how important like consistency is too, of like stacking weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of good water, sleep, food, good training. And um, yeah, I'm taking a little bit more of a lighthearted approach this summer. Last summer, it felt like I was like, I need to hit these workouts and these paces, make sure I'm good. Whereas like, yeah, I'm gonna have a couple workouts here and there, but like, I'm probably not gonna look at my watch much. Don't really want much pacing. And I think that's good for me. And I think that's good for all athletes in the summer, especially as collegiate athletes. Our season is just so, so long. We really don't get a break except for summer. So if I can just get a really good base, like aerobic base down and have fun with it and like run with my, like my high school teammates and also run with my friends back home. Um, and then just kind of whatever, have a run every, every week or other week where I pick it up a little bit and run fast and get the base down, but have my head set to realize, all right, it's gonna be a long season. I need to be locked in for nine months of the year and the other three months I can have a little bit of fun with it. And I'm going to have fun whenever I'm running, no matter what. But, um, yeah, I think that'll be a great mindset for me of just have fun with the sport, enjoy it. Um, and get back to just being healthy, man. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I don't care how fast I run at this point. I just need to be healthy and I know the times will come. And I know from previous experience, the fastest, like when I run the fastest is when I'm the happiest. Like it is a complete correlation, a hundred percent. When I'm happy with running, enjoying what I'm doing. When you go to St. Louis really, Bread Co., go to the R. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we've, I mean, we've talked about this. So it's a hundred percent me. Like For I am sure. very much a person of like, when I'm when I'm happy and doing things I love and running is one of those things, but even just like a happy kid and a happy person and that comes with not being injured, like the times come every time. I never worry about the time. So I'm always gonna be proud of my racing and the effort I put in. Um it really is just about being happy with everything I'm doing and um yeah, that comes with running, unfortunately. I think it's I've been told a lot like you can't have running as a main source of your happiness. And I wouldn't say mine's the main source, but anyone that's saying that's I think as that sounds bad, but anyone that's as dedicated as I am or any other high school athlete that's on the same level as me, or even guys that maybe aren't on the same level, but like feel the same way of like, if you'd be lying to yourself if you're saying there isn't a void, like there isn't a void in your life when you're not running. I mean, a hundred percent is it's a, it's, it's, I plan my whole day around it. I plan when I get up, when I eat, when I drink water, like I'm just a lot healthier person, a lot better person when I'm running. And, um, I just need to get back to that and I'm going to, and I'm, I'm so, so excited for it. I, I can't wait. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. So <laughs> what do you think it's going to mean to you to put on that Duke uniform for the first time? Oh, it's going to be awesome. That's what I've been looking forward to the most. Like running on a Tash is awesome. And like, that's great. But like, it, there's just like, this kind of goes into just like my love for Duke and the school so much, but there is like, so, so, so much. It's like such an honor, such a privilege to be aware that like Duke across my chest. Like, I don't know if it's because of like, I think a lot of people attribute to maybe the, like the, like the brand name or that, like the athletic, athletic and academic excellence. But I mean, Duke is just such, a, it's such a special school. It's amazing. I love it there. I mean, I, I, I said, I, I don't know, I guess I, I'll say this. I don't need to filter my words. Like I've, I've told myself so many times over this year, if, if I would have chosen any other school, but Duke, I would have transferred hundred percent. There's no doubt in my mind. And there were some sort of kind of thoughts in my mind, like throughout the year, I've told my coaches and teammates this, like, well, maybe this isn't the right school for me. And the more I spend time there, the more I, Honestly, the more running hasn't worked out for me, the more I realized that I love that school and that's that's where I belong. That's that's where I'm going to spend the next four years of my life, hopefully. Um, so I love it there and being able to put on that jersey and not only for me and the school, but for more than anything to represent my teammates and my coaches. And um, I don't know how our top seven is going to shake up in the fall, but I've got a I've got a I don't know I've got a good chance of being in the top three or even our, our low stick if I need to be. And I, I hope I can be that guy. And I, I hope I can be that guy for our team, lead our team to NCAA's and um, do some great things on the track and off also do some great things off the track. And, uh, we lose a lot of guys this year. So a lot of people are gonna have to step up and I'm, I'm going to try to be one of those guys and fill that role. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited where the Duke flew across my chest, such a great feeling. It's, um, it's, it's awesome. So I, I, I tried on the uniform when I got there in August and haven't put it on since, and I'm looking forward to putting it on this September and this fall and hopefully the rest of my four years there. So, yeah. Okay. Jackson, one final question for you. Uh, outside of running and, and getting back into running, what is one thing you're looking forward to doing this summer other than seeing me at Festival Miles? Oh, this is this might cause a long talk between us, but I'm actually okay. going to the summer. I don't know. Have I told you about this? I'm going to Paris this summer. Go watch the Olympics. Really? Me and my dad are. Whoa. Yeah. 
I know, right? Dude, I'm that's really, sick. really excited. So I'm going to I'm going to Europe again for like two or three weeks, but we're spending like five days in Paris. We're going to watch. A, I don't know if we're seeing all the distance finals, but like the men's 15, women's 15. We're, we're seeing most of them. Dude, that is can. sick. So, I am really looking forward to that. That'll be awesome. My dad's always want to go to the Olympics. I, I mean, obviously, I have too. We thought we like we for sure were like, all right, we're gonna go in LA twenty twenty eight. That's whatever, right? Right in our backyard. We for sure go to that. But I think he was kind of like, yeah, let's just let's go see it. So you might be I'm racing so in that one, I'm, anyways. You can't fully yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Fingers oh, crossed. I'm, yeah, I'm so excited for that. Um, Europe will be awesome, and then also like, on like just. School isn't crazy stressful for me, but like it's definitely an added stress. And now I just get like two and a half months to kind of like sounds bad, but like bum around and have fun, just hang out with my friends, enjoy running, sleep a ton, and like just chill. And I'm looking forward to that just summer and then traveling as well. Like I said, go to Europe, but um, yeah, this summer's gonna be good. I think this is gonna be a great summer for me, and I'm gonna gonna turn a lot of things around in my life and kind of flush the last two or three months and then build something new. And I'm excited. So yeah, I love it. Okay. Well, you did spar one more question. Final, final question. Jakob <laughs> or, or Josh, who are you picking? Dude, I want Josh Kerr. I don't know who's going to win. Really? I, I think Jakob will win, but I think Josh, I want to watch. I want to see Josh Kerr. I think Jakob will win. You're a Jakob hater? So good. No, I'm not a Jakob hater. I just, I lo- I think Jakob's awesome. Like if like he's so, so good and so talented. He's so hardworking. That's why I would never like disrespect him. But I don't know. I'm kind of at the point where I, I kind of want to see someone else win, you know, like it's, it's kind of like, it's a little bit like it's different, but it's a little bit like when like LeBron just kept winning or like Tom Brady. I'm like, all right, come on. Like, let's see what someone else win a real final. It was awesome. But he like, lost the him. last two. That's the whole I thing. I know. That's, I know. That's true. <laughs> but like, he, he, he won the last Olympics at least. He did lose that's the last true. That's two true. world finals. But Josh Kerr is also just like, I feel like he's such a fun guy to root for because he's just like this 6'2", like buff dude with sunglasses. He's like, just like bl- bright blonde hair. Like, I don't know. I think he's fun to root for. He's a cool guy. He's got a cool personality. And I think it also kind of goes back to, I think it's awesome. He runs for Brooks. I think that's kind of cool because um, you usually see all the Nike guys dominate. It's, it's cool to see him run. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, I think Jakob's going to win. I think he's the better runner, but I, I think watching Kerr win would be pretty cool, to be honest. So. Yeah. Well, Jackson, it's been a blast chatting with you for uh, 72 yeah. minutes here. Everybody's <laughs> catching up. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks again, man, both from the perspective of of doing. I'm honestly a little surprised you were so down to do this. I was honestly <laughs> expecting you to text back and be like, no, bro, I'm not ready to talk about some of this stuff. So oh, like no, your yeah. vulnerability and honesty, as difficult as I'm sure it was, I know it's going to help a lot of kids. So uh, prepare yeah. your text for uh, me to send you <laughs> screenshots of DMs of, of kids saying it was helpful. But truly, like, I mean this as a friend. All, like, I'm not even thinking this doesn't feel like a podcast. Like, I want you to <laughs> yeah. succeed so badly, and I know you will, and I know it's only a matter of time. So appreciate our conversation. Yeah. Keep crushing yeah. it. Hopefully, hopefully see you in St. Louis. Yes. Bro, yes. If, Thank you, Dominic. Appreciate it. If we go to St. Louis, <laughs> we're 1 million percent going to St. Louis Bread Co. Oh, we're we have to. Flex, 100%. Bro. <laughs> we're getting some flex. We're gonna go to like, <laughs> dude. We should like bring suits and like take <laughs> photos in front of it. Like get a baguette, bro. Those would go so so hard. It'd be so. Oh, funny. that would actually be so funny. Oh Anyways, my gosh, yeah. I appreciate you, dude. We'll talk soon. <laughs> of course, thank you, Dominic. Appreciate it as always.